here we go. party not huge party wasn't a rager but uh or uh, actually two parties christmas parties back to back now it's time to clean up this video um, we are talking about the behind the scenes everything that we did as we filmed the noble spec commercial that we just released if you haven't seen that video yet please go and check it out we worked really hard on it and it was something that was a bit of a passion project for us in this video I wanted to talk a little bit more about how we filmed it how we shot it what gear we used and our thought process uh, from start to finish so here we go hello hello good morning it's about uh, 6.30 in the morning, and uh, we're meeting at the studio. Hello, studio. We're meeting up at the studio uh, pretty early, and we're meeting up early because we were hoping to be on the bridge, the Aquina Bay Bridge, to film our subject running uh, before any of the traffic. Uh, but if you could hear behind me, there's loads of traffic. <laughs> I'm gonna be um, in the truck bed filming our subject with the gimbal, um, but from the sounds of it, that might be a little difficult. We'll see. See you on the other side. Good morning. <laughs> Rise and shine. Hey. Yeah, How are we feeling? Good. <laughs> I wanted to start off by saying though that Early this uh, particular commercial um, was a passion project of ours. Actually, Ollie Yardley, my good friend, homie for life, was the one who uh, originally became inspired for this project and he's the one that came to me and asked if we could film it as a uh, portfolio piece for the company. We were right in the middle of finishing up a few other projects. We had a commercial that we just released as well for uh, the city where we live. So we decided to, to do this project on spec. Normally what that means, you are funding the project in the hopes that the company that you're shooting it for will potentially buy it. That's actually not the case here for us. Our main goal wasn't for Noble to buy this commercial, which would be amazing and we would absolutely love that of course we love the shoe we do believe in the product and therefore we made a commercial about it but that wasn't our main goal our main goal was to try out new techniques try out new gear um, and to create a video that we loved that we could put out and show people you know this is our capability here at fox and ground this is what we could do i will also say do a project for you Okay, so um, just wanted to clarify that uh, I had intended on finishing this video at that time. Yeah. Uh, I think this was a couple months ago now, uh, back in December, and I uh, was super excited and had all this uh, footage to share with you, but um, then we ended up getting very busy here. <laughs> Um, at Fox and Crown and, and uh, things just kind of got chaotic. So anyway, back here now in the studio, finally, after a couple months to finish off this video for you. All right, so without further ado, let's get back to it. 
So I'm actually gonna break this down into five different categories. Gear, pre-production, locations, lighting, post-production and sound design. And uh, at the end, we'll kind of wrap it up with the final conclusion and our final thoughts on this uh, project. So number one, the gear. Our main camera body, we like to use the Sony FX3. It, I'm actually using it right now to film this talking head, so I can't show it to you. But here's some B-roll so you can check out what that looks like. I just purchased it for our team back in September of 2021. At the time, I was considering switching over to the Sony family. So I decided to pick up the Sony FX3 to kind of test the waters and see what, how we like it. And there are a couple things to keep in mind. I won't go into detail about this. However, if you'd like to know more about the FX3, let us know in the comments and we'll make that video for you. So just in a nutshell, I really love this camera. The FX3 has been amazing and we bought the camera and we wanted to test it out. So we tested it out on this no bull spec commercial. On the body, we mainly used the 35 millimeter prime lens from Sony. Housing the camera, we used a camera cage from Small Rig. It's their half cage, I believe. Hold on. Here it is. Um, and then on that, we used some rods on the bottom to house our FX Lion Nano One. We really love these batteries because they're small and they last a really long time. Um, if we're on an, an eight to 10 hour shoot, we have two of them and they last that whole time. So beyond that, we brought our matte box, but we ended up not using it because we forgot the step up rings to fit it onto the 35 millimeter lens. So instead we ended up using uh, a gobe ND filter, but normally we use our small rig matte box with Nessie ND filters and it works out really great. Moving on to lighting. I mainly use natural light for all the outdoor scenes. Luckily it was very cloudy that day and super foggy. So the lighting that we got on our talent's face uh, was super soft and looked really pleasant. But for the gym, we wanted a very specific look. So we went with our Godox VL 150, super powerful light, very good, inexpensive option. I mainly use this light for when I'm using scrim, which I did use unbleached white muslin. And I put our Godox right behind it to light our subject from the side and get a really nice, soft, even light on him. We also use the Digital Photo Solution Multicolor Tube Light. <laughs> What a mouthful. We mainly wanted to use it just to backlight the subject and have it, uh, the ability of multicolor just in case we wanted to change it up a bit. However, we ended up putting it down in the shot and we actually loved the way it looked. So we left it there, you know, and we know it's not practical to have a random tube light in the, in the shot, but you know, sometimes you do things that aren't super practical and it looks great and you go with it, do what you want. And then uh, when we went to the workout scenes, we ended up adding to that setup our Aperture 120D with a soft box on it. Behind the soft box, we put a Roscoe gel on there to get a warm tone. So too, when we walked into the gym, they had these par cans there that gave off this natural warm hue. And I thought those were really cool and I wanted to utilize them in the video. So I put a gel on that, a really warm one, and I put it way high up in the sky and pointed it down so that way it kind of emulated the light coming onto the talent that would, would have been from the par cans um, in the room. And then beyond that, uh, we used the natural lighting in the little windows in the garage behind him and we use that as backlight mostly um, or side lighting and we shot on the shadow side to give it more of that cinematic film like feel and then coupled in with the haze that we poured into the room it really gave for more depth and just more of a gritty feel which is what we're kind of looking for and then miscellaneous things that we brought with us you know your typical stuff duck clamps scrim negative fill st c stands you know whatever all the stuff Whew. That is a lot. Pre-production. Pre-production to me is the most important part of the whole film shoot. It's the it's the part where you plan what the story is gonna be, what it's gonna look like, what it's gonna feel like. And if you don't know all those things firsthand, you're shooting off the cuff, which you could do sometimes. If you've ever watched my videos before, you would know that I highly promote planning your things out, write it down, script it. Everything that I'm talking to you right now is written out in Milanote that I'm looking at right now so that I have a definitive plan so I know what I'm talking about and I don't venture off. This saves a lot of time in the production side of things, whether it's your on set or you're in post-production and you eliminate a lot of the guessing. I've never put no bowls on. <laughs> first time. First time, bro. It's the first time for everybody. Here are the main things that we did for pre-production. Uh, we had the planning stage, 
Uh, we had to find our locations. We had to find out who the talent was gonna be, um, which by the way, Luke and Sarah, thank you so much. Amazing athletes in our community. We had to schedule our film dates and we had to figure out what the end goal was. So this is the pre-production meeting. The pre-production meeting is where you plan all this stuff out. And we use Melanote here in our team. Um, we have pre-production meetings with our client and we ask questions, we figure out what the film is about and then we write it all down and storyboard and script right here in Milano. We decided to make this film about two different shoe styles, the runners and the trainers. And then we decided to have two different athletes represent these two different shoe styles. And so in order to do that, we wanted to provide a little bit of contrast. And how we accomplished that was filming one athlete outside and one inside and tell a clearer story. We really wanted this commercial to feel intense and exciting and really just getting you pumped up for the, for the shoes. Once we had the story and once we knew what we wanted to film, we went to the storyboarding phase and we storyboarded everything in Milano, giving us a visual of what we wanted this to feel like and what we wanted it to, to look like. After we storyboarded and planned, we collaborated with the team to ensure the vision and the plan was clear. So we just talked it over and made sure that all the details were, were right before we went in into the shooting phase. We made a shot list and a script and we were off to the races. So now let's talk about locations. First, let's talk about the gym. The gym was a little bit harder to film because there was a lot more gear involved. I filmed all the gym scenes at a cooler white balance to kind of give it more of a gritty, almost old boxing gym in the middle of the city kind of feel. I really liked that look. I really, I really loved it for what we were doing here. We pumped haze into this room, which kind of got out of hand and we actually had to open a door at one point. For the exterior, we wanted to have a nice contrast between the two athletes to represent the shoes. So for the runners, we decided to film outdoor in the daytime. And this was kind of tricky. We actually uh, woke up really early and got on location really early because we wanted to catch the sun coming up. However, on that particular day, there was a ton of fog and it was a little hard to see anything really. Um, but what, this was kind of a nice, a uh, happy accident because we felt like the fog that we had that day really matched nicely with the haze that we pumped into the gym and it kind of just linked the two two scenes together. However, the original plan was to shoot on the shadow side and have the sun just peeking through as she's running across the bridge. But you know, you can't control everything. <laughs> I almost stuck with only one location, which was the bridge, but we didn't want it to be boring going back and forth from the gym, doing multiple workouts to just one location of someone just running. So we decided to film in a few different locations and kind of spread the whole thing out. Post-production. For post-production, we use Premiere Pro. Um, Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve, those are all great programs, so if you use those, most of what I'm about to talk about, you could do in those programs as well. I won't go into too much depth on this part of the breakdown. However, this is kind of how our workflow goes with pretty much every project. I start to make files, I throw everything into files, and that way I stay organized. Then I pump it all into uh, Premiere Pro, and then I go in and I organize everything as um, in Premiere Pro. I color label everything, um, just anything to stay organized. When you're doing a big project, it's easy to get unorganized in anything that you're doing. Once my files are in Premiere Pro, I import the song that we're gonna use, which by the way, this song is picked and chosen um, in the pre-production phase, we all kind of, uh, sit around and we listen to certain songs that will inspire the project at hand. Once we found the finalized song, we throw it in the middle note so that everyone can hear it. So there's no guessing, there's no hours and hours of in pre-production working on what's what the song is gonna be. It's already picked out and it's right there in Milano. So we just download it and we throw it in and we use that to uh, inspire the rest of the video. Sometimes we'll go back to the drawing board and realize that the song doesn't work, so we will go back to picking another song and find something else. Most likely though, the song we picked, it, it works and we all love it. After this, I go back into Milano and I look at the shot list that we created for this film and I just go one by one and pull those clips in and start the sequence. Once the sequence is started, then I start the color correcting phase to make sure that everything looks the same for when we color grade later. After I do my color correcting, then I start the sound design and sound design is actually one of my favorite parts of making a film, so more on that later. From there, I play it back a couple times and I adjust and make little tweaks here and there. Once we have 
have everything situated in it. We love every, the way everything looks and sounds and feels. We showed it to the team and to a few other people who are outside of the team to get an honest opinion on the commercial and make sure that it looked exactly the way we wanted it to. And so once I'm, I'm done with the final sequence, I throw an adjustment layer on there and I do my final color grade. Um, this is where I have the opportunity to make any final adjustments and to make the film look and feel the way that we want it to look and feel. So let's talk about sound design really quick. And sound design is something that I enjoy probably the most out of the film making process. Um, for this commercial specifically, we knew that we wanted to get Foley sound but not use the natural sounds from a shotgun mic. Actually at the time, we didn't even have a, a proper shotgun mic set up. Now we have our Tascam and we use the Sennheiser MK600, um, which is amazing, incredible audio that we get for pretty much any kind of sound that we need. So we knew that we weren't gonna capture our own audio. So we decided to go to um, Soundstripe, which is what we use for all of our music and all of our sound effects. And we pulled all the sound effects that we thought we needed, running, footsteps, things like that. We took anything and everything like that and we put it into a folder and then we started to drop stuff in into the proper places. Beyond that, we used a lot of uh, cinematic whoosh sounds and heavy sounds and um, just big bassy sounds to really get that intense feeling that we wanted um, in this video. So we put it all together and it ended up looking like this, um, almost like a rainbow puked on your timeline. It's, <laughs> I've heard somebody say that before and I thought, it, I thought it was pretty funny. A couple of things that I didn't have listed here. Um, Luke and Sarah were awesome. They're CrossFit athletes and they're really, really amazing people, both inside and out. The, both of them were super happy to do this commercial for us. We ended up buying them some noble shoes so that they could really experience them and get to keep them and enjoy them just for their help and, and their awesome hearts and wanting to help us out here so that was a true blessing thank you guys and also they were very helpful in making sure that these movements that they were doing looked right so sarah really just that scene on the bridge she really booked it and it looked awesome in camera and and she did amazing luke i would consult him every time he would do a move and he would look at it and say yeah that looks good and um eventually we we all got tired and we stopped doing that um but hey you know film shoots are long you gotta do what you gotta do. Anyway, that's enough out of me, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us for this video, the behind the scenes of our Noble Spec commercial. There was a lot to cover here, so if I went too fast on any given topic and you'd like to know more in depth, let us know and we'll make a video dedicated to that. If you learned something or if you like this video, press the like button, subscribe if you're not already, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.